if roses are the language of love and you can't even manage a handshake, we need to talk. I'm Nick Fedorov showing you how to prune and care for roses. Oh, gosh, there are so many things, but, oh, nothing like this. Hi, huh, Gail? Looking for worms. What's the matter? According to Nick Federoff, who's noodling around the kitchen in here, Nick Federoff, our gardening expert, this is a great time to grow worms. Absolutely. Every household should have worms in them like you can't imagine. And I'm learning, being a single person, eating out a lot and saving containers like this in my refrigerator, I'm learning that I should not throw this out. Everybody knows I, re I recycle everything. I should not throw this out. This is, that would be a waste. I should feed goodies like this, last night's or last month's Chinese food, to, to the worms. Yeah, worms make great pets, by the way. They don't, they don't bark. Why they don't they? Oh, here's, a, right, here's some worms right here. Oh, Look nice. how lovely they are. Isn't that great? Oh, they're so soft. And they're pretty, right. too. They're pr oh, yeah, I don't know about that. One bite you? Oh, well, they don't have any teeth. Thought you were breakfast. No, they don't bite. Okay. Now, how do we do this? How do uh, we what you do is this. Once you have your kitchen scraps going... Whatever it is. Doesn't matter. Whatever it is. As long as I meat products. You use meat products, you start stinking up the place and all kinds of terrible things. They, they grow like this big. Okay. Right. What you're going to do is put them underneath the sink of your house. That's where I keep the and comet, usually. Yeah. Well, well, here we have something called a squircle. You can use any kind of container. Let me put these in there under my fingernails. Okay. There you go. Go ahead. And you'll take your, you'll take your, your scraps and you throw them, just sprinkle them on top like that. Boy, those really and stink. and this right <laughs> should you <laughs> <perhaps> be stinky? <laughs> they could be stinky or they could be fresh. It really doesn't matter. They don't care. And what happens is that one pound of worms will eat about a half a pound of scraps a day. Okay. Which is amazing. And one pound of worms is about one thousand worms altogether. All right, so and the the, they'll come to the top oh. and they'll go and see those oh look oh, at those oh, worms. Look, they're down there. He's yeah. Forward. There so you the, go. Oh yeah. Okay. Look at that. All right, let's do like a Martha Stewart thing. Let us make. Let me make my own. Uh, oh no. We're gonna do. Farming. We're gonna do a Nick Federoff thing. <laughs> food they complain not our next guest please welcome nick federoff the amazing insect chef yes he actually cooks with insects <laughs> hi nick oh, okay. hi nick how you doing yes we brought little tatiana with yeah, us do you like bugs no oh, i we, hate bugs we've got some for you here today but you don't have to eat them tatiana only no. i will try them because my little friend and partner dared me to do this so well see marilyn see. says oh i eat anything i eat sushi i eat this I eat that, and I said, oh, really? Well, we got a bug segment. You're eating that, too. So well, have that, or Nick. Well, you know, everything tastes like chicken. Oh, we're that's even, what, even the bugs. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what they say. So now, what is this? Well, this right here is pesto pizza. And, uh, yeah, pesto pizza. Uh, oh, and what we oh. Do is, <laughs> Get it? Pesto pizza. Oh. And what we have here is this lovely concoction is a little bit of olive oil and some, uh, well, grasshoppers. You like grasshoppers? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Well, you can go ahead and take No, not like an ice cream. Well, I'm I mean, not like an ice cream. Pizza. Yeah, we well, put it on the pizza and okay. then you just do make a pizza like you normally would. Okay. Delicious. Uh, it may be. You know, it's delicious. <laughs> no. uh, okay, I'll try it. You can try it. I'll try it. Yeah, you'll really like it. Who? Who do you cook for? Yeah. <laughs> well, not too many people, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah. Every once in a while, you're going to run across a little tiny problem that can happen on your roses. First off, you have to understand roses need between six to eight hours of direct sunlight. Otherwise, they may get some of this white powdery stuff that sits on its leaves. That's no good. It's terrible to get rid of. The other reason why you would get this white powdery mildew is from improper watering, from sprinkler systems washing and getting right onto the leaves. That's not a good sign. Direct your water right to the bottom and the base of the plants. This way, you're not going to have any problems. You like the potato and I like the potato. You like the tomato and I like the tomato. Kelly Williams Brown. Tomato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the, the whole, whole thing off. off. Come on, Nick. Come on. <laughs> so, get this done. Come on, let's get this done. <laughs> Is it over now? Think so? yes. Okay. <laughs> we, uh, we know you all uh, shop at Nick Federoff and... Uh, no. <laughs> but it does sound like that. It does. He is the editor of Things uh, Green magazine. He's also heard on KBY Radio on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, mornings, right? Saturday mornings? Yes, yes. Every, every Saturday morning at the ungodly hours of 5 to 7. Yes. Well, those are good gardening hours. Well, what you oh, got to do oh, is drink lots of water before you get yes. to go to bed on Friday night. You'll be uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I love this. What a tip. 
I love it. Aren't you on the on the Luden's cough drops or whatever? You know, the... <laughs> that's a moonlighting job I have. <laughs> okay. But this is why I'm into horticulture. See what I lack on cutting on my face and makeup on the bushes. I see. It's gotta go I somewhere, see. right? Yeah, right now, now, what we're gonna do here is to show you how you can grow terrific tomatoes, the or tomatoes, tomatoes, uh, in your home on your patio. You don't have to have a big yard. Or no, anything. no, no. You see, gardening is the number one hobby in America unless you're a newlywed. <laughs> you got other things going on. <laughs> and. And, and, with, and with that in mind, if you have one small house plant or acres of land, you're gardening. Which, mm -hmm. That's the way I like to think about it. Yes. And tomatoes happens to be one of the best ways to get started. Hey, you. Yeah, come here. Now, a little closer. That's it. See this rose? You want to increase the size of your rose flowers? We can do that. But you can't tell anybody, okay? I want you to run down to your local market and get yourself a bag of Epsom salts. That's right, Epsom salts. It'll say magnesium sulfate right on the bottom. Then what you do is you bring it home and get yourself a quarter cup or just a small handful and place it right at the bottom of each rose bush. Water it in and stand back. These roses will almost double in size. Give it a try. Uh, there are things that grow that are edible and that can be very good for you, as a matter of fact, and very tasty and unusual. Uh, with us right now to prove this to us is Nick Federoff, and Nick uh, has, among other things, Things Green Magazine. He's on CAFI Radio, Saturday mornings. Daily News. Right for the Daily News. Uh, I'll forget I'm that. Doing, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm not doing what I'm doing. Steve's not Just, doing a good job? No, he's doing a great okay. job. Okay. <laughs> and he can also be uh, read in the Daily News. Thank you. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Nick Federoff. Good, good, good. Oh, you you. Great. First of all, first of all, do not eat this. No, no, do no. Do not no. eat this. No. <laughs> Never want to do that. Okay. All right, we have a bunch of plants. Uh, we work, you, you're t you alluded a little bit earlier to about um, pesticides. Yeah. And I want to kind of uh, bring that into fold over here. There are plants that you should watch out for. And you should always make sure that you just don't start gnawing on everything in your yard and garden. For instance, <laughs> over here we have this uh, purple plant. Uh, beautiful wisteria. Is yes, that is beautiful. Now, why yeah. is this not? I could never get mine to bloom. Why is this not edible? It's so pretty. Yeah, it's. <laughs> you're right. Uh, just the plants in there are toxic. You eat them, mm -hmm. you ingest them, you can get sick, nausea, vomit, and then uh, so you start pushing up daisies tomorrow morning. But you don't want to do that. And then. Uh, I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another very common plant is uh, oleander. Well known to be toxic too. Mm -hmm. I've always heard about. Very them. much the so. little red ones, huh? Yes, these right well, here. You don't but want these the will grow. Either, these will grow to big plants. Yeah, don't invite anybody over for any oleander soup. If by mistake you should ingest this, what happens? Uh, again, you'll start getting dizzy. You'll get sick, uh, vomiting, uh, uh, diarrhea, all that kind of. Okay. Is there any rule stuff. of thumb that you can look at a plant and tell that it's going to be trouble if you decide Absolutely to eat it? Absolutely not. No, you have to kind of bone know. up and you have to kind of know about it. And uh, being very careful, I grow everything organically. And so, you know, if you come in my yard and garden, you're going to be pretty safe that uh, you're not going to keel over by eating too much. Okay.